All right, we are officially live for my very first Facebook live stream. I am so excited to be here. You guys have been so excited. I just announced this like a couple hours ago and I feel like Oh, everything's just crazy right now. I'm so excited. Um, welcome to my Facebook. I know a lot of you are here from my Snapchat and from my Instagram and from my model's Instagram. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi guys. My name is Jasmine and my Instagram is I L Y J A Z. I love you, Jazz. <laughs> Her page is so nice. So she's actually a makeup enthusiast. She's a blogger and now she's focusing on her um, modeling career and when when I saw her face on my friends page I was like girl you got to hook it up we need to do something big and we were so excited to work together and I thought how fun would it be if we actually gave back to you guys because I mean all this time I've been wanting like once in a while I'll do free classes like it's so short and it's so rushed but ever since Facebook live began I've been so tempted to like do a full on like a one hour like amazing tutorial for you guys on Facebook. Facebook has been one of my you know loves of life because when I first started my career um, I was on MySpace and I brought everyone to Facebook and that's when I really exploded so you guys are the reason I'm here today you know then comes Instagram then comes Snapchat and all of my lovely family there um, but really it starts with MySpace and Facebook so as a huge thank you to you guys and as a way for you guys to understand how I teach and you know for those of you who've always wondered what is it like to be a Dress Your Face Live member what is it like to be Tamana's student well, this is your chance to learn for free on me here on Facebook Live. And I am just so, so honored to be here in front of you guys today. I think this is going to be an amazing class. This has been a class that has been um, requested every single time I ever ask, what's your number one request, guys? And everyone says, highlighting contour. I want to learn about the nose. I want to learn about chiseling, all that stuff. So that's what we're going to do today. Today's going to be actually a lot of fun because it's a two-part class. So this first part is free on Facebook Live. It's a one hour class, so be sure to like, you know, make sure you have that kind of time. Or you can always replay later. I know a lot of you are watching from around the globe, and I'm sure it's like wee early morning hours somewhere else, or maybe in the middle of the night. Um, and I don't expect you guys to stay up. I know a lot of you are so excited that you want to stay up. Um, but believe me, this class will be, I mean, Facebook automatically keeps it stored and you can replay it once it's over. So um, you can definitely watch it later. I'm not going to delete it right away. Like you'll have a couple days to um, watch it. So this class is going to be all about face, her entire face. Um, I know a lot of you guys saw a little sneak peek on my Snapchat and that little fun teaser video that we made so for cute. you on Instagram today. But that whole face look is going to be shown to you right now. I'm going to show you everything from um, primers, foundations, concealing, um, how to create the perfectly proportioned contour and highlight map all the way to how to blend, how to set each zone correctly, what brushes are best to use. I'm not gonna show you very, very expensive brushes. I don't expect you guys to shell out all this money. I just wanna show you the actual brushes that I like to use and I don't really spend a whole lot on that kind of stuff. Um, so I'll, I'll give you some coupon codes and stuff too in case you guys wanna make a shopping list. But today's really about the technique and really explain to you every single step and why I do it. And of course, we're also gonna talk about the glow. We're gonna talk about blushes and all that good stuff as finishing touches. And then, after the whole face part of class, you guys, if you want to see the rest of the makeup look, and I'll show you real quick in case you guys missed the video that I posted, what this makeup look is. I'll show you actually a picture. Um, but in case you guys wanna watch the rest of this makeup look, which is that sultry autumn colored eye look with the dark lips um, that's going to be shown for my members on dressyourfacelive.com for part two of class which starts at 6 30. so right now we're going to go ahead and start the whole face class when that finishes you guys can join me on dressyourfacelive.com if you're already members just log in and get on there at 6 30 and i'll continue the rest of class which is the part two the actual eye and lip um, which won't take too long it'll be a little bit less than an hour 
um, as you know, I will be explaining a lot and we'll have a Q&A at the end of that one too. So that's going to be really cool. I know I'm really appreciate that too. Um, and then also for those of you who are not members, you will have a few minutes to kind of decide if you do like what you're seeing in this class. Um, I'll give you the link. It's dressyourfacelive.com. You can go and check it out and see if it's something that you want to enroll in. It's an ongoing learning experience. There's no start and there's no end to it. It's just a monthly learning experience where I teach um, on average once a week. So it's just constant looks and new techniques and new products that I'm showing you guys. And I'm here for you always. This isn't something I'm ever really planning on ending. I was born to teach and now I'm giving back to you so you guys can get your little taste. And then if you want to join me on Dress Your Face Live, you absolutely may. You have an open invitation um, or wait for another random, you know, class here, which will be kind of rare. Mm -hmm. This is right now a one-time thing, but let's see how it goes. It'll really depend on your guys' views and shares. So the bigger you make this on Facebook, the more chances there are that we will do this again for you. So here's the look that is going to be the finished look. Um, I'll just go ahead and show you now. Um, let me. So this is the look that we did. And basically I'm gonna show you how we go from a before to this during and that finished face look and the eyes and the lips are going to be shown on dressyourfacelive.com. But you guys will basically learn how to perfect any face starting now. So first things first, um, she has no makeup on right now. We literally removed everything with a Neutrogena makeup wipe. <laughs> so what we'll do at this point is we're going to zoom into her face so you can get a nice clear view of her um, complexion and I'll get started on the step-by-step -step. and if you guys want to take screenshots of anything feel free to do so um, if you guys want to write down anything make sure you have your phone or a paper and pen handy so you can quickly jot down notes but yes we will be able to have you replay this class um, so you can re-watch and in case you miss anything Alrighty, here we go. So, if you guys are happy with this view, let me know. I'm, you know, this is my first time doing this, so I'm not sure how the comments happen. I'm not sure how we can really see any of that stuff. I'm gonna like quickly give myself a little tutorial here because I really don't know what's going. Oh, there we go. Oh my God, Hi. I'm looking at your. Oh, so many eyes. Oh, this is so cute. <laughs> Ooh, she reminds me of Adriana Lima. Okay. Okay, girl. Okay. <laughs> <Take it. laughs> All right. All right, here we go. Thank you for your comments. You guys are amazing. Thank you for your loves and your likes and all that good stuff. I'm thinking that all these hearts are you loving this so far? So hopefully there'll be more because once we get started, it'll be like on a whole other level. So last night I went to the launch of Elsie Cosmetics brand new Pearl Radiance Primer. I am a big um, believer of making sure that your skin looks absolutely perfect before any makeup application. And so I'm going to use this product on her today um, as her primer. Now this is oil free. It's amazing for oily skin, dry skin, combination skin, it's basically meant for everyone. Um, but it gives you a nice smooth radiance. I have already tried it before on my hands. Um, and I really love the texture of it in comparison to a lot of other primers out there But in case you can't get your hands on this one, which hasn't come out yet. It'll come out pretty soon this month um, But other alternatives would be the Mac prep and prime the original This is not with any SPF. This doesn't have any um, shimmer in it or anything like that It's just the basic prep and prime which works on every skin tone. I mean sorry every skin type but even the most oily skin people I've used this and it does not crack or you know melt or anything this is a really really versatile product now if any of you have really dry skin this is my um, my recommendation for dry skin this is hourglass number 28 serum this is a priming serum which feels like an oil but your skin ends up drinking it especially if your skin is dry 
this is meant for you. I have super dry skin and on my very dry patches, I love to use this and I feel so hydrated and so radiant with this stuff. So those are the three primers that I um, plan to always carry in my kit, unless I find something else that I love even more. And there's one more type of priming balm that I wanted to show you guys, um, which is from Benefit Cosmetics. And that is the Pore Professional. So this is a priming balm. It's a thicker balm-like consistency um, that comes out in a squeeze tube like this. And you can use this for areas that have large pores, um, fine lines, things like that. And it kind of just tends to fill in those areas. And then you can put your makeup over it and it works out really, really well. So um, I do use this in conjunction with another primer. So what I would do is use another primer all over and then on the areas where you have larger pores or any uneven skin texture go ahead and glide this over those areas and then continue with your regular routine so i'm going to go ahead and use the pearl radiance primer on her and we are going to just pump a couple pumps right onto the back of the hand make sure your hands are sanitized and clean so this is the back of my hand this is the pearl radiance primer and i'm just going to go ahead and apply it all over her face i'm going to make sure that her skin is drinking it up i don't want to see white on the surface i don't want to see it looking too shiny on the surface i basically just want to lightly not vigorously but lightly massage it into her skin i'm just going to tilt you so you're facing yeah there we go gorgeous so make sure you're massaging it everywhere don't skip over any areas and again, if any of you have combination skin, like dry patches in certain areas, oily zones in certain areas, it's totally okay to zone out your primer. So like I said, what I do is um, if there's a, a client that has major patchiness in certain areas, I'll go ahead and add that hourglass serum on those areas. Or if a client has very large pores in certain areas, I'll go ahead and put the Benefit Professional in those areas. It's totally okay to zone out the face based on what is needed per section. You know, T-zone, cheeks, whatever it is. All right, this is looking so good already. It feels good. Does it feel amazing? It feels really good. Oh, I love, love, love. Okay, her skin drank that right up. It looks amazing. Now we're totally ready for the foundation. So I'm going to use MAC Studio Fix Foundation. And I have a few different colors that I carry in my kit depending on you know how dark I really want to go. But for her, I'm going to use NC37. NC37 Studio Fix Foundation. Um, if you guys do not have NC37 in your countries, um, I would suggest mixing NC25 and NC42, which is what I used to do until I discovered this color in Dubai. And so I bought a crap load of it because it's a, a really great in-between shade. So I'm gonna stick this on her just to give her a little bit more of a bronzy glow throughout her face. So I'm putting a little bit onto the back of my hand. I'm just very lightly saturating my brush and the brush that I'm using is the Morphe Duo Fiber Foundation Brush. This is from morphebrushes.com and you can use my code DYF on any of your purchases on morphebrushes.com and you'll save an extra discount on top of their already very, very low prices. They have like eyeshadow palettes, they have concealers, they have liners, um, but they're very much known for their brushes and this is from their Duo Fiber Collection and it's one of their foundation brushes. I'm so sorry I don't have the number on it because I use this so much. I literally wiped off the number so hard that the indentation isn't even on it anymore. So there's no way I can really like see it unless like I were to look it up and just tell you guys. So as you can see what I'm doing right now is I'm actually pushing it right into the skin so that this stippling motion does not remove any product that I'm applying. So you know how a lot of people say, oh, buff it in, buff it in. But what happens is when you're swirling it, you're wiping off half of the product that you're putting on. So my way of doing it is to push it in the skin so I'm maximizing the coverage and not wasting any product back into the brush. So basically everything that I'm putting on my brush is depositing right onto her skin and it's looking super smooth, super full coverage, very flawless, not cakey, and not streaky either. Just push, 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 push. Just keep pushing until you see that everything looks like her natural skin. 
And if you feel like you need more coverage, what you would do is instead of putting on a lot at once, my recommendation is to stipple one good layer first, then look at her face, see if she needs another layer, and then you can go ahead and apply your second layer after the first one has already been blended. That way you're prolonging the longevity of the wear of her foundation instead of putting one thick layer which can easily be wiped off. You're doing several thinner layers which are already dried and set and perfectly sitting on her skin. So I'm just going in and making sure that there's no chunks of foundation sitting on the surface of her skin. I want to make sure everything's looking very, very smooth and Whatever's left on this brush, I am dragging down to the exposed areas of her neck. And that way, there is no difference between her face and her neck. Now, as far as matching the skin tone and the foundation together, I'm going to be very brutally honest with you guys. I do not fret about that too much. Um, I don't really spend so much time on, um, figuring out the exact shade. Why? Because I'm just gonna be very honest with you. We have so many steps left. We have so much concealing, highlighting, contouring to do after the foundation is done, plus the powders that I use, my DYFL members, my DressYourFaceLive.com members already know this, but I only use full coverage powders. I do not use any translucent powders. And that way I'm increasing the flawless coverage of her face and the foundation's hidden. The foundation's only on to allow something for her contour and her highlight to blend into. That's the only reason why I put foundation on anyways, because all the other stuff is full coverage as well. So as we get into this tutorial, you're gonna learn a little bit more about me um, and why I do certain things, but that's one of the biggest things is I do not worry too much about the exact shade of the foundation because I wanna make sure that as long as it's overall like blending okay with her, that's fine. But I'm not gonna sit here and waste my time trying eight different colors on her and then half of our appointment is over by the time I'm done blending all that. We still have a lot to do. So don't worry too much, we're good. Um, normally what I do to at least gauge a decent color for her is I figure out what my tones are. So I have all the colors of my own skin tone and I understand my own skin tone. So let's say I'm an NC40 at MAC. And if she is more bronze than me, then I'm gonna stick her in a 42, or maybe a 45 if she's much darker than me. If she's lighter than me, then maybe I'll stick her in a 35 or a 25 or something like that. So as long as you know your tone in every brand that you're carrying, then you can gauge your model or your client a little lighter than that, or a little darker than that, or whatever. And as far as the undertones, I only carry warm tones and a couple of cool tones just as mixers. Most of the people that you're going to match are going to be warm. Even if they have a lot of pink in their skin, if you check their neck, eight out of 10 times, it's gonna be more yellow. And you definitely don't want them to look like a tomato, right? Sorry, I've been talking and talking, you're not like seeing my face. Um, but I just, I really wanna explain this to you and get you guys to understand why foundation is something that you should basically focus more, if you're gonna do all this glam stuff, focus more on the undertone and the overall darkness or lightness of it, but it doesn't have to be exact. Now, if you're looking for yourself and you're not doing so many layers over your foundation, you're basically just doing foundation, concealer, and some powder, in that case, I would go to a department store, get matched um, by a professional who works for that line and kind of trust their opinion and kind of what you could do is get a sample, go home, see it in different lighting and see how you like it. Um, but as far as like makeup kits, if you guys are aspiring makeup artists um, and you're trying to build your makeup kit, don't worry too hard about that. And another little advice that I have for you is invest in makeup palettes like this. It's from Cinema Secrets. Graftobian also has stuff like this. RCMA also has stuff like this. Um, there's a ton of brands out there that carry um, like palettes of foundation. These are full covers. They will even cover tattoos. It's insane. So you can use this as concealer and or foundation. They're in palettes. So what you would do is you go in with the spatula and you, you scoop out like whatever colors that you want to mix for your client. You can use it for highlight and contour and all that stuff. And you would go ahead and customize your um, client's color. And that's what I learned on. 
So when I first became a makeup artist, I only had palettes. And then as I started learning about different foundation tones and stuff like that, I started using MAC. So, okay, end of this spiel. Let's go ahead and zoom in and continue this tutorial. So now that the foundation's on, we're gonna jump into concealer. And I'm gonna apply NC42 concealer. And I know you guys are probably screaming right now, like why the hell would you put NC42 on this fair girl? It's because the NC42 Pro Longwear Concealer from MAC has such a beautiful brightening tone to it. It's like an orange undertone. And I'm gonna stick that around her eyes. Not that she has major dark circles. I'm only using this so I can prove to you guys that it is not a scary color to use on light girls. Uh, I don't use it on like super light Caucasian skin tones because this is gonna turn very orange on them. But for anyone like her skin tone, my skin tone, or a little darker can benefit from this color. Uh, so I'm gonna put a little bit onto the back of my hand. And sometimes what I do is I'll even mix it with a slightly lighter tone if I really wanna brighten her under eye. But I want you to see what it looks like without me mixing it first. So I'm gonna use my Morphe M428 brush, M M428 from Morphe. I'm taking a small amount, she's gonna look up to the ceiling, and I'm literally just stamping it around her eye area. And I want you guys to see how much this looks like her natural skin color. It doesn't look darker, it doesn't look lighter, it literally matches her skin color. And notice how I'm also stippling it, just like I stippled the foundation, I'm using this brush flatly though, and as I'm patting, it's becoming more and more mattified, it's setting really nice into her under eye zone, and it starts to just look like her own skin. You can't even tell I put concealer on her, that's the whole point. You don't want a white ring around the face, around the eye, because that's gonna look so obvious that you're hiding something. So what my thing for you to do is to try to find a color that literally melts into your own skin tone and it won't look like you're even wearing concealer. Isn't that amazing? And C42. I feel like every girl, our skin color, should have this color in their kit. So don't be scared. It's, it sounds dark, but um, the Pro Longwear from MAC actually has a lighter... Um, formula as far as like the colors are concerned the colors go on lighter the formula is heavy it's nice and full coverage it's thick it dries fast it creases less but the colors come out lighter than the colors of their foundation so i love it look at that natural beautiful now i'm also gonna create another barrier on her nose why am I doing this? Because with my experience, I've noticed that girls usually around their nose area, their foundation tends to break down because of the oils. Sometimes if girls have allergies, they rub their, their nose on the bottom, it turns red throughout the day. And so this way, I'm adding this little barrier of a really nice heavy duty concealer and I'm creating a little more coverage here as a protection. And then whatever's left on the brush, you can go around the mouth. And that's it. So at this point, if there's any blemishes you wanna cover or anything like that, all you have to do is like, let's say I wanna cover this, I'm just gonna stamp over it. I'm not gonna blend, I'm not gonna streak, I'm just stamping over the blemish and letting it go, and that's it. So now, we're done with the foundation, we're done with the concealer. Now for the fun part, the whole point of you guys watching this class most likely, which is the contour and the highlight. So what I'm going to do is I don't want her to look ghostly. I don't want her to look like she has the white mask around her eyes. So what I'm gonna focus on is actually the contouring and I'm not gonna highlight with the cream on her today. I'm going to highlight with powder afterward. But with the creams, I'm going to just contour her. And I'm going to be using my foundation palette from Cinema Secrets. There's different colors and they've reformulated this. They've repackaged these colors since I bought them. Um, so this doesn't look like what it looks like now if you bought it. Now it's like a very sleek, modern packaging. This is their older packaging. And this one is the kit number nine, which I don't know if their numbers are the same anymore. So don't quote me on this. This is just a dark, warm kit, dark and warm. And I'm gonna go back into that Morphe brush that I used for her concealer. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of this darker shade right here. And I'm gonna apply it to the back of my hand so I'm not double dipping. 
And now we can go ahead and start contouring. So looking at her face shape, I'm going to follow from the top of her ear going down towards the corner of her mouth to elongate the face. So I'm just creating a little line like this and I'm going to go ahead and do it to the other side and I'm going to make sure that it matches as far as the level is concerned. All right, go ahead and look into the camera. Ooh, very fierce already. And now I'm going to do the temple zone. I love contouring the temple zone. It creates a nice three-dimensional effect. And the times that I, and then I also do a little bit across the hairline. Now the times where I change it up as far as like the, the top, the forehead, is when someone has a very large forehead, I'll do a little extra contouring on the perimeter of the forehead. If someone has a small forehead, I won't contour the forehead at all. I'll only focus a little bit on the um, temper, the temple zones, but I don't do much contouring up here because I don't want the forehead to look too tiny. So instead, for tiny foreheads, I focus more on the highlight rather than the contour. Now for average foreheads like her, I'll do a little bit of contouring and I'll do a little bit more highlighting right in between um, on the center of the forehead. So now I'm gonna go in and very lightly contour her jawline. So whatever's left on the brush, I'm just kind of creating a little bit of a shadowing right across the jawlines. Just to chisel it a little bit, but she has a great jawline already, so I don't have to do much. It's just gonna be a little shadowing right there. And then lastly, I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush. This is literally, um, a paintbrush from Michael's art supply store, which is totally okay. And it is, um, yeah, it's just a paintbrush <laughs> from Michael's. And I just kind of go to Michael's once in a while and I just pick up things that I think will work for whatever. And we're gonna go ahead and chisel right down her nose. Now keep in mind, when you're doing a nose contour, you really need to go as straight as possible and you need to make sure that the lines are full, fully, fully, fully um, parallel to each other. So when you're doing this, you can't let the nose look wider and wider and wider as you go down. I see so many contours where it's skinny on the top and then the line kind of spreads as the nose spreads. You have to ignore where the nose is going and just create nice skinny, skinny line right down the bridge of the nose and make it look as straight as possible. And then to prevent the nose from looking too, too long, I like to cut off the tip and make a line right across the top too, just to make sure that basically the tip looks nice and sharp and it visually shortens the nose so it doesn't look too long. I also love to darken this little Cupid's bow here and add a nice little shadowing right under the lip for a very pouty, sexy effect. So I'm gonna let her turn side to side so you guys can get some screenshots of what this looks like. This is a very universal contour map. And like I said, the only time I really ever change it is if someone has a, you know, a larger proportion forehead or a shorter proportion forehead. Um, in that case, you'll know to either contour more or highlight more. And the other thing that I sometimes change is the angle of the cheek. She has a rounder face, so I'm able to angle it really nice and steep. If she had a very long face, I would not be able to angle it steep like this because it would make her face look even longer, even skinnier. So in that case, if you're working with a very long face, you wanna create a more horizontal contour, which goes more towards the nose rather than the mouth and that's going to create more width in the face rather than length. So now we're ready to blend. I'm gonna go in with my MAC 130 brush. Morphe also has this brush, but I'm just not sure which number it is. I don't think I brought it with me. But I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start pushing in this contour right into her hairline, going all the way around. And the goal is you don't want to see any lines. You want to make sure that everything looks as smooth as possible. 
How are you guys liking this class so far? I see that there's like literally thousands of you on right now. That's crazy. How are all of you awake right now? I mean, we're good in California. I mean, it's like the day just started, but I'm talking about all my amazing fans in the UK and in the East Coast. I'm hoping I'm not interrupting your dinners, but if I am, just use your phone. Sneak it, sneak it over to dinner. Oh, I love you guys. I'm just taking a quick, uh, quick look at your comments. So cute. Thank you guys. I'm glad you're loving it. You're getting a good taste of DYFL right now. So I get to see my online students every single week. And we go over this every week, but with a new look and with a new twist. So I use new models every week. And so you get to learn on different faces, on different complexions. I've done super, super dark complected models, super light complected models. I've done a lot of Indian bridal looks since that's one of my biggest um, requests from DYFL. And I also do hair classes. So if any of you want to get better at hair, I teach updos and basic styles every month on DYFL as well. So when I say DYFL, I don't know if all of you guys like understand my terminology. DYFL is dress your face live. It is this cult that we've created a year and a half ago and it has blown up to this like epic like movement where all my girls call themselves the DYFL army. It's like, it's so <laughs> cute. And they know so much, like their stuff, their work is amazing. And I feel like such a mom, like I get so proud of my girls all the time. And I go through the hashtag and I like their posts and I see like their recreations of my looks. Like I did a, um, recently I did an Indian bridal class using a lot of different colors and I got so many recreations from it where they like kind of posted my picture of my model um, after class and then they tried it based on the class teachings. By the way, this is just the same concealer brush from Morphe that I'm using, 428. I'm just blending all the um, small zones with this because I don't want it to spread too much. Um, anyways, yeah, so when they do their recreations, um, I repost my favorites on my Snapchat, give them a shout out, and of course I make time every night to go through my hashtag and like the posts that involve DYFL. So if you're showing off what you've learned, if you're showing off your notebook with all your notes, if you're showing off your laptop, showing one of my classes, or if you're showing off a recreation, I make it a point as long as your profile is public and I can see it, um, I will like your posts. So make sure you're tagging me, make sure you're hashtagging Dress Your Face Live if you're recreating anything that I've taught in class. Look at how beautiful my baby looks. Oh my god. I told her I was like, I'm gonna adopt you. I love your face so much. I'm adopting you. I'm keeping you forever. Yes. <laughs> she's like, yay, I'll be patient. I'll be patient. Sister. Sister. And the new baby. <laughs> and the new one. Alright. So now it's time to set each zone. We can't just leave her like this because it's gonna melt right off. There's nothing holding it on. So I'm gonna go into my MAC 227 brush and I'm gonna start setting her light zones with a light color powder. So first I'm gonna go into the NC25 powder from MAC, this is NC25 Studio Fix. And I'm really digging in, you guys have to realize, I'm using so much product right now, so much. And she's gonna look up to the ceiling. By the way, this technique, you have to not use so much product if you're using it on someone who's um, very wrinkled or very dehydrated under their eyes, but for my brides and for um, you know people who are not super super wrinkled, I'm able to go nuts and put a lot of product on. So right now I'm using NC25, which is a few shades lighter than her skin tone, and I'm pushing it into her highlight zone. So remember how I told you um, in this particular tutorial, I don't want to make her look ghostly because I'm going dark on her eyes later on DYFL and I'm going dark on her lips. I don't want her face to look like a ghost. So instead of highlighting with a cream highlight, I'm going to focus my highlight with this powder. So, you know, it's still going to look bright and amazing. It's just not going to look super ghostly and scary. I mean, it's going to look scary right now. Not hot. <laughs> it's going to look scary until we blend it, but see how that looks? It's like Photoshop. Gone. Shine, gone. And same thing here. This is NC25 Studio Fix Powder. 
I don't use translucent. I kind of do things against the grain. Um, I know all the YouTubers and everybody. I mean, nothing's wrong with it at all. They're using, a lot of people prefer to use translucent. They bake with it, all that stuff, um, which is totally fine and it looks amazing. They still come up with the same beautiful end result. Um, but instead of sitting here waiting for things to bake, I go straight into a full coverage powder and there's no, no reason or no need to bake. You just jump right in. No? I've tried baking um, after I've done this and it like brightens me up a good amount, but I don't think it's, it really worked for me to like keep the makeup on too long. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it made a huge difference. Like I feel like this kind of just did it. Yeah. Baking makes me dry. Oh yeah, it, it can. It can totally like suck out all your natural oils and, and you end up feeling a little dehydrated. So right now I'm going in to the highlight zone of the nose and I'm just making a straight line up and down. Using the flat side of the brush, I'm going to complete the T-zone here. Same color. I haven't switched colors yet. And I'm going to brighten up the chin. I'm going to brighten up the bottom of the frown line, which she doesn't even have a frown line, but I just want to show you. Right in here and right in here, brightening up with the light color. Ooh, looking good. So now I'm going to go in with NC, let's see, what am I going to use? This is also a color I got in Dubai, but you guys can use NC44. Um, I'm using NC43.5. And I'm going to go in with the brush that I used in the video that I posted, or maybe I didn't even post the scene, but it's Morphe 438, Morphe 438. And I'm just going to set her contour zones with this darker powder. And I'm gonna overlap slightly in between her light and dark, so it looks, you know, a little smoother there. And I'm also gonna darken up this area and bronze up her neck a little bit. Same on the other side, just setting her contour zone, getting that jawline bronze, making sure the top of her neck is nice and bronze so that this brown line doesn't show later. And let's darken up her temple. And this all should look matte at the end. So if anything doesn't look matte enough, go in and re-mattify, add more powder. Everything's got to look matte. If you still see shine anywhere, that means most likely the makeup will not last in those areas. Now I'm going to squeeze the brush and I'm just going to lightly shade the sides of the nose and our little lines that we're making. All right. Now for the middle step. This is like the game changer. I'm using NC, let's see what I'm going to use. I think I'm going to use NC40. NC40 right here. And let's see how much I use it. <laughs> Gosh. So now I'm going to go in with my MAC 109 brush. This is the MAC 109 brush. And I'm going to set the areas in between her dark and light. So it basically looks like her contour is melting into her highlight. It should look seamless. So right between the rainbow right here, between the light and the dark. Bam. The rainbow, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful, look at that, seamless. Beautiful, smooth, I mean, it looks Photoshopped already. Now I'm gonna fill in all the areas that have not been set yet. Her entire like jaw hasn't even been set at all. So I'm gonna make sure with this medium color, which should match her own skin tone really nicely, I'm gonna make sure that that is what's setting her jaw. Go ahead and turn towards me. I'll go ahead and get this part done. And notice all the powders that I'm using are full coverage, so it's only making her look more and more flawless. Beautiful. All right, so now that that's done, let's make her nose look more natural. So we're gonna go in with the same color, NC40, and I'm going to pack over her contour. 
and it's gonna mattify, this is key. <laughs> this is gonna mattify her contour and it's gonna make it look natural and we can always step it up a notch using a contour palette but right now my goal is to set everything so it does not move. I want this face to be indestructible. Yes. So anywhere that you see shine, that means that's a no-no. That means it has not been set completely. So go ahead and use this as your magic wand and mattify it. All right. Look at her face, girls. Oh my God. Matte and perfect. All right. Now it's time to step it up a notch. We're going to go nuts. We're going to whip out the um, Anastasia Contour book. I don't just have the kit, you guys. This is the book. Book. Yes, the real <laughs> deal. How can you just stop at a kit? Yeah. So this is the book. It has every single color in it. And I'm going to focus on the lighter tones because I'm about to step up her highlight game. I'm going to mix banana, which is down here. And I'm going to mix that with um, golden peach, which is this one right here. So banana and golden peach mixed together is going to be her perfect highlight tone. And the brush that I'm going to use for those two is a Dose of Colors setting powder brush. Ta-da. And now we take it up, we step it up, and we basically press. See that? Do you see that? It's and it's not that. shimmer. It's matte. It's just like ah, another layer of holy goodness added this is for those of you who like a fierce highlight and contour this is definitely optional um, for those of you who want to just kind of have like an easier look um, stop at the previous step but for those of you who want to step it up and go that extra mile this is what the glam girls do so i'm mixing golden peach and banana and i'm just pressing it into her highlight zone under her eyes god like i can't even right now Love it. this is just everything and make sure you go all the way up against the side of the nose because it makes the nose look skinnier. So, bam. See? <laughs> <laughs> looks so nice. A little bit here, a little bit here. We don't have to do too much, but we're good. And now with a small um, eyeshadow brush. This is just a 239. Oh, did we get kicked out? All right. I'm going to wait a sec. Are we good? Okay. I got scared for a second. I thought we all got kicked out, but that's okay because it's Facebook. We could always come back. Um, anyways, we just brightened her T-zone stuff, but I want to really go in with the nose. So I'm taking a really tiny brush, this is a 239 brush from MAC, and I'm going into Banana and Golden Peach, so same color combination that we use under the eye. And I'm just going to literally draw a beautiful straight line and smoothing out the edges. And this is going to make the nose look super sharp and skinny. I know everyone's so obsessed with nose contouring. Well, here you go. A free nose contour class. Bam. And then the sides, I just go ahead and sculpt a little bit further. I grab more of the golden peach and the banana, and I just make sure that the sides are super sculpted with this small brush as well. And it just looks more, I mean, it literally looks like a nose job. It's, it's pretty scary how, how much it changes people. But if someone asks for it, now you can do it. And talk them out of getting surgery. Sorry, surgeons. <laughs> We're taking over. Okay. Nose is done. Face is done. Looks amazing. All that good stuff. If you want to really go nuts with her contour contour i'm going in with this color called havana this one here i love havana and we're gonna just give a nice bronze effect to the outer portions of her face so i'm going to focus a lot on the outer part of her contour here 
I'm just kind of dusting it. I'm going into the temple zone on this outer part and that's it. So just here and here, like a big C. And that's what I'm gonna do on both sides of her face. I don't like to go everywhere with a heavy amount of Havana because I just don't want it to look so orange or so dark, especially, you know, the jawline. I don't want it to look all brown here and then all of a sudden you see the neck color. I really want everything to look just like shadows, like natural lights and shadows. So the C is kind of like the way to do it. Stunning, I can't even. And then whatever's left on the brush, if you want to go in and just kind of bronze up any areas that just look so pale to you, you can totally just go in and give her a light dusting of some bronze just to add a little bit of color to the face if you need. This is optional. Oh my God, girl, that's good. All right, now we're gonna go in and add some shimmer and some blush and her face portion will officially be done. What time is it? Ooh, we're right on time. OMG, this like never happens. All right, here we go. Anastasia's glow kit. Bam. Holy grail. Yes, holy grail. <laughs> we're gonna add some shimmer. I'm gonna show you my secret techniques to adding shimmer. These are the two colors I'm gonna mix. So I'm gonna mix summer and moonstone together. And the brush that I'm going to use is the Makeup Forever um, number, what the heck? 108s, number 108s. And I'm just gonna press it right into the top of her cheekbone and slide. <laughs> Holy crap, right? And then use your clean finger to melt the edges into her skin without covering up too much of the other zones. And that way, it looks like her own skin is wet and glowing. Look at that. It literally looks like I put a dewy foundation on her. And that's the secret. Like, it's so simple, right? You apply it, you press it around, and then you've got to use your finger to let it literally melt into her skin so it doesn't look like I just threw a random highlight on her. It looks like her skin is glowing. It looks just delicious. It's amazing. Oh, my God. I can't. See? And now that's how I get a dewy look. So people ask me all the time, they're like, how do you do a dewy look? Um, I'm against dewy looks because it's wet and wet means it's going to transfer and it's going to melt and it's not going to last. And my stuff, if I have a bride and I'm about to dress your face her, like she cannot be dress your faceified without being completely matte first. Otherwise it's not going to last. But if they want that wet look, bam, you got the wet option and you got the dry option totally up to your client and no one will ever think that you have all these layers of powder on. It looks like cream. Amazing. In case you guys are wondering how I learned this stuff, it's because I've been doing this almost my whole life and it's all about trying new techniques and experimenting and seeing things on yourself and then trying them on your clients, trying them on different skin types and seeing what works and what doesn't work. So basically the whole point of me teaching is to cram my 14, 15 years of practicing knowledge, actually more than that, but that's like my legal years um, of knowledge into courses for you guys to learn a lot faster than I did. It took me a long time to come up with a lot of these techniques. And yes, most of them are original. I didn't watch YouTube. I actually, there was no YouTube when I started. So all of this stuff that I'm showing you is literally through trial and error. And it's my absolute pleasure to help you guys. I know there's a lot of you out there that want to be better at your own makeup or you want to be makeup artists and start earning a great living. And let me tell you, this world doesn't have enough makeup artists. I know you guys think that everyone's a makeup artist right now. There's not enough talented makeup artists. There's a lot of makeup artists who have a lot of potential, but my goal is to grow the Dress Your Face Live army to the cream of the crop. And my girls are really, really killing it out there. I'm so proud of everybody. So check that out. Dewy, beautiful, glowy. She can literally just like light up a room right now. It's so gorgeous. All right. Last step, blush. Here's my baby. It is the Big Blush Book by Tarte. I don't even know if they really sell this. I think they were giving a bunch away at like some giveaways and stuff recently. Um, but these do come in singles, so I'm gonna use 
um, a color that I think would look good on a lot of you out there. And if you guys love it, you can totally get it. It's exposed, this middle color. And I know it looks like nothing, but believe me, it does show up as something nice on the skin. So I'm going to use my favorite blush brush, um, which is the MAC, the one I used on her yesterday. Um, I think it's like 168. I used this like hell on her yesterday. <laughs> but we won't go that crazy today. I don't want to like have red cheeks on her, but this is exposed. And I'm just going to lightly dust it on her apple. See that? So it's a very light dusting of this beautiful mauve shade, which almost looks pink on most skin tones. And what I'm doing is I'm putting it on her apple and I'm just dusting it upwards so it just blends into her contour and her highlight. So again, on the other side, just dusting it on the apple and working it out into that contour and highlight so it just looks a little bit more natural. Amazing. She looks great. Go ahead and like dust your shirt a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely don't want all that everywhere. But we're gonna go ahead and zoom out a little bit so you guys can kind of get a nice, actually before we zoom out, sorry. Go ahead and do a side to side turn. Let's do a full on, you know, if you guys wanna take any screenshots, this is how the face should look prior to eyebrows and eyes. And I love doing face first because I spend so much time on face. Girl, we spent an hour today. But I mean, normally I don't explain every step when I'm doing a client, so I mean, we buzz through it, but when I'm teaching, I like to spend a good hour on face. So now we can zoom out. I'm gonna chat with you guys for two seconds, and then we can all head on to Dress Your Face Live for the rest of the look, yeah. So exciting. So what did you guys think? I wanna know, I wanna see your comments. Um, I hope you guys got a good idea of how being a Dress Your Face Life student is. Um, if you guys think I talk a lot, that's awesome because the whole point is for you guys to truly understand every little step. This isn't a YouTube tutorial, this isn't an edited thing. This, every single class is completely live. There is no fancy, nothing going on. Every mistake I make, you see how I fix it live on camera, which is the funnest part, actually. I love it when there are mistakes made because that's what happens in real life. And you can't just edit that out. It's for real and you have to figure out how to fix it. So those kind of scenarios do happen on Dress Your Face Live. And actually, I am thinking of doing a class on how to fix mistakes, like in general. I'm gonna like purposely do mistakes on a client and fix it right in front of you guys. Um, so there's a lot of things. And then also with Dress Your Face Live, I listen to your requests. So if any of you guys have a request on something that you've been dying to learn about, I will absolutely take into consideration all of your requests and the most popular ones or the, the, the ones that I haven't done yet, I will absolutely add it to the schedule. So if you're curious to see what kind of classes I already have, go to dressyourfacelive.com, go on the homepage, and you'll be able to see my upcoming classes and below that you'll see available to watch now. That's my current class library. So you're gonna look at those and basically it's like my recent 10 classes. So basically like a month or two worth or maybe sometimes almost three months worth of classes are sitting right there for you to watch at any time until they expire. Classes do expire because it is an ongoing process. We keep bringing in new classes, I keep teaching new classes and old ones expire. But if you ever want to have full access, never have an expiration date on a class, we do have an all access pass available, which you'll, you can see on the homepage. I'm not gonna get too into the boring stuff, but I just want you guys to know how easy it is to learn. If you guys liked what you saw today, this is literally one small taste of what it's like to be a member on dressyourfacelive.com. I'm so passionate about this. I believe in it a thousand percent. My students are growing tremendously. Um, DYF Academy has featured a lot of the Dress Your Face uh, Academy students who are also Dress Your Face Live members and have continued to learn and continue to grow since our class together. And it's just an amazing tool to have. YouTube is amazing too to learn about new products and quick techniques. But if you want in-depth information like what I just gave you a taste of right now, an hour of just face, um, this is definitely for you. So for those of you who want to learn how to do your own makeup better, I teach very everyday makeup looks as well. Um, and for those of you who are makeup artists or aspiring makeup artists and you want to get like you want to kill the game, you want to own it in your city, wherever you are in this world, um, this is also meant for you. And if any of you ever want like hands-on learning, 
Um, on Instagram, you can go to DYF Academy. That's my actual school that I have here in downtown Los Angeles. And that's where we can actually, like I can literally hold your hand and go through the process with you if there's anything that you're stuck in. Um, and you would actually get a dress your face training certificate as well, where you would have the option on getting pro discounts with so many different brands who are already our partners. So it's incredible um, the amount of value that are that's in these trainings. But absolutely, if you're looking for cheap, affordable, easy to access tutorials at your fingertips 24 seven, dressyourfacelive.com is for you. If you're looking for hands-on training for certification, then DYF Academy is for you. But I strongly recommend dressyourfacelive.com for any of you who just wanna get better at makeup or for any of you who need to get to that level where you're comfortable enough to start working on clients. It's incredible. You guys can see the testimonials as well. We're working on getting more testimonials for the homepage so you guys can read up on what other people are thinking. And of course, just search the hashtag and you'll find a bunch of different works from my students. So hope you guys enjoyed. I had a great time. Again, you can follow me on Dress Your Face and Dress Your Face Academy um, on Instagram. And you can follow my model Jazz at I-L-Y-J-A-Z on Instagram as well. So you can totally stalk her and like love all her pictures like I do. <laughs> so nice to meet you guys online. I am loving your comments and thank you guys so much for your support. At this point, if you guys want to continue watching the rest of this look, I'm going to finish up her eye makeup into a very sultry fall season look and I'm going to finish up her lips. I'm going to show you exactly how I did do the perfect dark vampy lip with no mistakes. Um, and that is going to be shown in just a few more minutes at 6.30 p.m. live on dressyourfacelive.com. If you're a member, go ahead and go in now. Go ahead and log in and wait for me. We'll be there in a few minutes. We'll get started um, on the eyes. And if you're not a member, you do have a few minutes to go ahead and enroll. It takes two seconds and it's immediate. So as long as your enrollment went through, you can log in and start watching right away. And do not forget to watch the other classes that are on the website because if they're expiring soon, I don't want you to miss out. I really want you to take advantage. It's $19 a month, you guys. That's cheaper than one brush. That is cheaper than this brush. 19 bucks a month for unlimited views, unlimited learning, and every single month there's more classes, and sometimes I bring back old classes that are classics that people just absolutely love, and so you'll get a chance to taste those too. So. 19 bucks, you guys. It's incredible. I'll see you on dressyourfacelive.com in just a few minutes. Mwah. Thank you for watching. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you.